In recent years, KL has seen an influx of luxury hotels even as tourist arrivals remain tepid. At the same time, Airbnb has also shifted market dynamics. So, is there enough business to go around? We talked to Anders Dimblad, GM for Banyan Tree and Pavilion Hotel, about the outlook for the hotel industry this year, tourist expectations, and whether all competition is good competition. You've been doing this a while, the hotel business. How, how do you see the hotel market in Malaysia, specifically KL, since you know, it's where everybody feeds into, compared to the other places you've been before? I think KL has an advantage of uh, its unique location in sort of the heart of Southeast Asia. Uh, there's a lot of good flight traffic. Um, as I mentioned earlier, there is a lot of competition, but that also brings awareness to the market. So I think that's good for KL, but I do still believe it is very much a consumer driven market at this time. Mm. There is a lot of competition, um, which is also very good because with it being a consumer driven market, the rates and the average rates for the hotels within the city are far less lower than you might have in some of the competitive cities around, for example, Singapore or Bangkok. So people have that opportunity to afford to stay in properties that they might not have been able to stay in in the past or choose to stay in when they're on uh, their vacations. But how many is too many? Because I don't know about you, but recently I, I seem to think that I see a lot of five-star hotels sort of like popping up and not just five-star hotels. You see the business hotels, so you see the Sofitels, you see the St. Regis, you see mm. two Sheratons, for example. I mean, is it too crowded still as yet or is there still potential? As long as the competition is healthy and as long as there's a demand. And as you asked earlier on, I think you, you, you need to focus on what you're good at and what are your key strengths and to be able to deliver on that. Mm. Um, there are certain you know, aspects of the environment you can't control. Uh, if people want to build more hotels, more competition. Uh, hopefully the government and everyone who works in the tourism sector will uh, deliver more tourism or obviously more business, which is everybody wants um, to increase obviously the economy. But for us, again, we got to focus on what is our core strength and what we can offer the market. Having the competition and having more and more competition, mm. there will always be another hotel. No, it doesn't matter which city you're in, there'll be someone else will be able to offer you later technology, a larger room, a bigger suite. But for me, it's that consistency in service and ensuring that you're making your guests feel as home as possible. And hopefully that way you'll gain repeat business and your repeat guests and that building your brand loyalty to you. What's the current uh, occupancy rate in KL? KL for hotels, I believe it's sitting around the 63% mark if you took up an overall average. Isn't that really low? If you're on the owner side, of course, it's uh, lower. Mm. Uh, we would always want to boost it, um, but it's also it's a reflection of also what is your average rate. Um, we, if your ADR uh, or your average daily rate is sitting around 600 ringgit and you're sitting at 63%, then you're going to be definitely above your market average. Uh, if you're sitting at 40% with a rate of 300, then you're really going to be struggling. Um, so, again, you, you can't, as long as you're outstretching your competition or what the photo marketplace is, then I think you can say to yourself, that, hey, look, there's always room for improvement. There's constantly, like we talked about, we want to constantly improve. But from a rate and perspective, you need to set a average amongst your comp set and hopefully try to achieve to do better from them. So then what is your view on the tourist market in KL? I ask this now because we are just about a year from the new government, give or take, and they have done a lot of revamps, including tourism, there have been cases, there have been people filed, you know, they've been more conservative with their targets. You're in this business, is tourism in Malaysia muted? I wouldn't say it's muted, I think you're right, they brought down their initial figures, um, which I think is is a good thing for them to do. I think it's better to under-promise and over-deliver mm. than vice versa. Okay. Um, I think that they're building a lot of uh, theme parks, there's a lot of attraction, they're building a lot of infrastructure. And again, infrastructure doesn't come overnight, it takes time. But when people see that uh, with the change in government or that they are taking a lot of the business and sort of the comments that are viewed more seriously and they are building and investing in, in the country itself, they take, uh, people can take confidence in that and pride in that. And that will also then hopefully boost the economy as well as leisure and uh, the business traveler. How do you ensure people choose you in the era of Airbnb? Airbnb is a, uh, you know, it's like, Uber or uh, Grab in, in today's world. It, it's, it's a unique experience, it's a unique offering, and it's a unique service offering. Um, I think hotels differentiate from Airbnb in terms of we are governed a lot more um, by our own regulations, our own services, our own promises internally and externally um, than perhaps Airbnb might. Um, Airbnb tends to cater more from a domestic uh, hotel, sorry, domestic apartment or domestic residences than 
actually purpose-built buildings. Okay. Um, of course, price is a very, very, very competitive factor, and it's a very, very big decision maker, not just for Airbnb, but also for various properties. Uh, as mentioned earlier, Kuala Lumpur is, is very, very price sensitive, um, especially compared to our neighboring cities. So there is a lot to offer within that same sort of region. But again, I, I, go, I go back to it's being able to offer something that's consistent, the security of the guests, that they feel safe and secure in where they're staying, um, what we offer, our food and beverage, our spa, uh, the recreational facilities. So it, it's more of a total package. So what then are the main challenges for HOPA hotel operators in the coming year? For me, the biggest challenge is the manpower at the moment, to be very frank. Um, we talked about there are around five or six new five-star hotels that have opened up in the last year, mm. ourselves included, and with our sister property, Banyan Tree. So if I go off my head in terms of these six or seven properties, you're talking about a, uh, an employment of around three to 4,000 people. Pavilion Hotel actually opened in uh, December of 2018. How do you sort of ensure that you stand out? How do we stand out? I think our service, our location, our design, um, and what we believe we're offering our guests. Um, the competition in, it's, it's also a very good competition because it keeps you fresh, keeps you working on ensuring that you don't rest on your morals, that you want to continuously improve, offer new things.